Hello, welcome. We're looking at Khan Academy, trigonometry, graphs, and we're looking at phase shifts in this video. So let's go down and look at that. Um, it's down, down, down. I want to look at this one. Graph sinusoidal functions phase shift. So let's do some of these. All right, so we've got a function and you can see the graph, you have these two points to drag around. They want us to graph it. So I'm going to pull up their um, little notepad thing right here. And let's identify a couple things. First of all, um, when you're writing a cosine or a sine function, and let's say we're using f of x as our generalization, f of x equals a times the cosine of b times x plus c plus d. When you have a function written in this way, you can quickly identify the basic information you need to graph it. So for, for example, here, the first variable is a. It's not your amplitude necessarily, but, oops, I think some lag right there. It's not the amplitude necessarily, but this is, if you take the absolute value of a, you get the amplitude. So the absolute value of a is the amplitude and b is not the period but if you take 2 pi so the period is equal to I should say 2 pi divided by the absolute value of b um, you get the period the phase shift is represented by, I'll say, the absolute value of C. That's how far you're shifting. And if there is a plus sign, you shift left. If there's a negative sign, you shift right. And then D is the midline. All right, so um, these variables, we got A for amplitude, helps us find the amplitude. B finds the um, period. C finds the phase shift, and D finds the midline here. Now, if you look at the way this is written, we don't have the exact matching scenario. We have three for amplitude. So our amplitude is the absolute value of three, three. Our period is two pi divided by the absolute value of two, which is just two pi divided by two is pi. Our phase shift though, this is written differently, right? Here, we have factored out b from both terms, essentially. The way they have it written this, the b has been distributed. b times x is 2x, and b times c is 6 pi. So what we should do to get a similar form here is think, okay, it's 6 pi divided by 2. That's our phase shift. Or you can rewrite it as 3 cosine of factor out the b term, 2, times x plus 6 pi divided by 2, which is 3 pi, and that's our phase shift, c. And our midline is still plus 4. So the phase shift is the absolute value of 3 pi, so it's just 3 pi, and then the midline is at 4. All right, the next part is what order do we do these things, right? How do we use this information to set our graph up? Okay, so I'm going to start um, you could start with your horizontal or vertical uh, movement. I'm going to start with the horizontal stuff first because it's, I think, the, the most intimidating, I should say. So our period is pi radians. So that tells me that from one peak to another, it takes pi radians to do that. From here to here, it's pi radians. Okay, we've got that information. That's our period. And our phase shift is 3 pi radians. Okay. And so what I'm going to do first is consider the period, and then I'm going to shift it over. So the first thing I'm going to, sorry, the first thing I'm going to consider is the phase shift. So that backwards. Uh, with horizontal transformations for all functions, whenever you have uh, things happening to your inputs here, you basically follow the order of operations backwards because you're essentially solving for x. It's hard to explain quickly, 
But the idea is that instead of distributing B first as you would in the order of operations, right? If I said solve this, you would distribute B and then do some stuff going from there. You would distribute first. We're going to actually deal with the addition element first. We're going to deal with um, the phase shift first. So I'm going to take a cosine function. Here is the cosine function. Here we've got a midpoint here. This is your parent function for cosine. It starts at 1, comes back to 1 at 2 pi radians. And I'm going to shift it over. In this case, it's plus, so back 3 pi. So from pi, I'm going to go to negative 2 pi. And then I'm going to go here. So I've just shifted back 3 pi radians. Now the period should be pi. So this parent function completes the cycle in 2 pi, but we want to complete it in pi radians. So we want to complete it in, in half the distance. So from negative 3 pi to negative 2 pi, we should see a full cycle here. It's kind of hard to do, but we can do it. And then, so now you can see it, it's completing a cycle in 1 pi. Then our amplitude should be 3. So we go down to 3. And our midline is at 4. So we move everything up here to 4. These are 3 apart. Go up to 4. And this goes to 1 here. I think I've got it, but I'm going to check this on Desmos because you know there's a lot of steps, a lot of things happening here. So let's plug that in. It's three. Here, let me pull up my. I think I have a Desmos window. There it is. Okay. Scroll down a little bit for myself. All right. So it says f of x equals three cosine of 2x plus 6 pi plus 4. And I'm going to click on this little gear and change the step here to pi. So it puts things in radians. All right. Now let's scroll over. Okay. All right. My two points, where are they? I've got one at negative 2 and a half 1 and one at negative two and three quarters, four. Negative two and a half, one. Let's see if I got that. Okay, two and a half, one. So this is negative five pi over two is negative two and a half, one. And the other point I think is, where is the other point? I lost track of myself already, okay. The other point is here at a height of four. So let's see, I'm just going to type in y equals 4 and see if I've got where it meets. All right, so negative 11 pi over 4. 4 goes into negative 11 twice with the remainder of 3, so I've got it. All right, that's the same thing. Don't be afraid to use Desmos to check your work here, right? Look at all the things that are going on to solve this. And um, the way I'm solving it here is primarily by transforming the equation, all the transformations. I would solve it algebraically, um, in, and maybe I'll show that in the next one, but I wanted you to see what it looks like using a transformation. All right, so we got that. Okay, so now we've got a problem that looks a little bit less involved, so I feel encouraged by that. It says g is a trigonomic function of the form, so here's our form of the function. Notice they're writing it a little bit differently here. So in their notation, C um, is actually not your phase shift. It's different than the way I wrote it before. Okay, below is the graph of G of X, and it intersects the midline at 1.5, 1.5. That's our midline. And has a minimum point at 1, 1. Find the formula. Okay, so we can do this one. I find this a little bit more manageable. And then if we get another graph question, I'll show you how to do that algebraically. So our midline, where is that, is this line right here, right? It's at 1.5. So D is 1.5. Okay. Our amplitude is the distance from the midline down to the minimum here. So that's 1.5 minus 1. That's 0.5. Absolute value of that is 0.5. So A is... 0.5. Uh, it could be positive or negative. I'm not really sure yet. 
um, the amplitude, I know the amplitude is 0.5, right? So the amplitude is 0.5, but A could be positive or negative. So I'm going to just write, um, let's make a little note for myself here. Okay. Um, A is positive or negative 0 0.5. We're not sure yet. The period is the distance between two maximum points, which we could read nicely here. Between 2 and 4, that is 2. So the period is 2. The value of B so is determined by using the period in this case. And period is 2 pi over the absolute value of B. And that means, in this case, the period is 2. That means that uh, the absolute value of B equals 2 pi divided by 2. Kind of just swapping this around. 2 pi divided by the period is B. So 2 divided by 2 is just pi. So um, here, B could be positive or negative pi. We don't know which one yet. Um, again, because uh, we're taking the absolute value of that and that will determine our function, uh, our function's period. So you can be given positive or negative pi. And when you take the absolute value of that, you get pi, and the period will be 2. So we don't know which one it is yet. OK, and then we also want to look at our phase shift here. Well, what I like to do at this point, we, they tell us we're given a sine function. OK, I see that this looks like a cosine with no phase shift. It looks like a cosine function. But with a sine function, I'm thinking, wow, this, this sine function, you can see it visually here. If it started on the axis, if this, my y-axis was right here, because sine, if you remember, starts at 0. So for, for, pretend for a second these two axes that I'm drawing are the x and y-axis. And if you have that, if this is our x-axis and this is our y-axis right here, you can see that the sine function would just go as it normally does, I should say normally, or as the parent function does for y equals sine of x. Ignore these units and things, but what I'm saying is, and I'll sketch it over here off the graph, undo, I think I can undo all those things, hopefully. Yes, okay. If I had a parent sine function, because we're, we're working with sine here, it looks something like this. Right? This is our sine function, f of x equals the sine of x. And as a reference point, I'm thinking, well, that point is here. It's been moved over from here, where it should be, to here. That's our phase shift. It's going to the right 1.5 units. So this point they're giving you indicates the phase shift here. So I'm going to write phase shift. So here, actually, the variable c is not your phase shift because they didn't factor b out of it. In our case right here, um, our phase shift will be, um, I'll write ps for phase shift, equals 1.5 units. And it's going to the right, so I'm subtracting that value uh, because of the horizontal transformations, if you subtract, it goes to the right. And then um, I'm going to divide it, um, I'm going to multiply that, excuse me, by pi right here. So it's 1.5 pi, and that's our c value. Because this value, the way they've written it, c is the product of your phase shift and your period. So now the question is, do I use positive or negative pi? Do I use positive or negative amplitude? What do I do? Uh, positive or negative value of a, what's going to happen? So first, I'm just going to write this function this way, y equals 0 0.5, so I'm going to write a as a positive value, times the sine of, I'm going to write the period as a positive value, sorry, I'm going to write the b value as positive pi, x, plus 1.5 pi, plus 1.5, which is our midline. Now, um, one thing I want to change right away is this sign right here. That should be minus, because I'm shifting to the right. That's the way I'm viewing this. You could view it as a shift to the left and then solve it differently. And I'm not going to make this negative, because if I shift this over here, the, the way the sine function is working is just like the parent function. If I saw that maybe it's like this, right? 
then, um, in other words, if it's going down in the in, in, through this point instead of up, I would consider it um, reflected over the x-axis or reflected over the midline, I should say. But here, the way I've written it, it works nicely, right? And as for positive or negative pi, we'll look at both of those examples right now in Desmos so you can see what happens. But first of all, let's make sure we've actually got something that works here. So we have a sine function. They call it g of x, so I'll call it g of x here. Equals, I typed in 0 0.5 minus 1.5 pi, minus 1.5 pi. And I do want to enclose this in brackets. And then plus 1.5, which is the midline. OK, I want to zoom in a little bit. OK, so let's compare this. I'm going to drag it up like this. And OK, we have to cross the point 1, 1 and 1.5, 1 1.5. So I type in g of 1 and our output's 1. OK, that matches what we should get, right? Input of 1, output of 1. That's the point 1, 1. What about g 1.5? Output's 1.5. We got it, right? So this matches. Um, so let me clear this off. Oh, and let me write this in. So now g of x equals 0 0.5 times the sine of pi x minus 1.5 pi, close parentheses, plus 1.5. A lot of work. And we got it. OK, so this and this last one, I'm going to stop at 3 because I don't know how long this video is right now, but it feels very long to me. Um, in this video right here, in this problem, we're going to solve, we're going to graph this, but we're going to do it algebraically. So you can see another approach to dealing with this problem other than just moving it around, because maybe, maybe that wasn't working for you. All right, so they just want us to graph it, right? That's the only task. So we can use any methodology that works for us. So for me, um, I, I can go identify the midline. That's 5. Amplitude, uh, midline of 3, amplitude of 5. Period is 2 pi divided by pi over 2. So that's 4. And then the phase shift here is pi divided by pi over 2. Um, just like we did in the first problem in this video, and that would be 2. So we can use all that information to move the graph around, starting with our phase shift, then adjusting our period, and then amplifying it and shifting it, or shifting it and amplifying it. Um, that's the process. Here, we're going to solve it algebraically, and maybe that's something that you will like. So how do we do this? Well, I want to know, first of all, um, when will the output of this function be, uh, so I say zero, right? That's a, so uh, let me say that. So when I'm solving this algebraically, I want to look for landmarks, things I can evaluate quickly to make sense of this problem. And I guess what I, all the information I just spouted out, one thing that really stands out to me is the period. And the period says, um, and, and the midline, I suppose, So any of those features of the graph can be helpful. I'm going to start with the midline. I know that the midline is 3, right? I know that. So I can use algebra to solve this. I can find out when does this thing have a midline of 3 or an output of 3. So 5 times the sine of pi over 2x minus pi. Okay, so I think I said earlier in the video that I want to show you how to do this algebraically. I'm going to avoid that. And I, I, I just remembered that later in the modules you'll see um, algebraic work on this. So, so I'm going to hold off on that. So let me remind you how to solve this graphically. Um, we've got a midline at 3. Okay, I feel good about that. Oops. Midline is 3. The amplitude is the absolute value of 5. So the amplitude is 5. The period can be determined from the b value. The period is 2 pi divided by pi over 2. So 2 pi times 2 over pi. Right? When you divide by pi over 2, you multiply by the reciprocal, and that's just 4. And 
right here. That's not our phase shift. I'll write PS for phase shift. Um, here we want to remember. You want to remember that this. If you want that to to be the phase shift, you got to first divide by b, right? So here we've got. I want to say absolute value pi divided by pi over two. Right. So that's going to give us two. So that's our phase shift. And it, the phase shift is to the left, right? Nope, not to the left, to the right, because we're subtracting. And it's subtraction in all functions, not just sine, cosine, um, but all functions. When you subtract from the input, you'll get movement to the left. So now let's use this information to graph our function. First of all, I'm going to reset this to a parent function. And that looks pretty good, right? So it crosses at 0, has an amplitude of 1, takes about... Uh, 2 pi or about 6 to complete a cycle um, about here can I get it to work actually there we go sorry so here uh, it takes 2 pi to complete one sine wave so this is our parent function now I'm going to adjust it I'm going to do the horizontal stuff first and I'm going to start with the shifting the phase shifting I'm going to shift it twice to the right okay did I do that correctly oh boy uh, let me start over. This okay, so I'm at one and a half here, so I should go up two. One, two, two. Okay. Phase shift is done. Period is four though, so it should take from two um, to six to complete one cycle. So I'm gonna kinda mess with this until I see that happen. There it is. There from two to six it completes one cycle. Now our amplitude is five. Okay, so I'll mess with that first. When you do vertical uh, shifting, you can stretch it first and then move it, or move it and then stretch it. Because I stretched it first, our amplitude's five, and now I want to go to a midline of three. So I'm just noticing, okay, if I move this up to three, I have to move this to eight here, right? And I think that does it. Let me just make sure here. Let's say I move, I think I moved it over by accident. I think that's better. I say it's better because the, the period should be about four, and that looks better. Okay, now, it's a lot of work. Before I click check here, I'm definitely going to check it on Desmos or any app that works, right? Okay, so we've got f of x equals five times the sine of pi over two, x minus pi, close parentheses, plus three. Okay, I'm gonna zoom out. All right, and here I'm actually not in radian, so I'll click this little gear and delete where I typed in pi per step. And that will put me back in numbers here. And what two points do I have? And I might want to change some things. I have two, three, okay? So I type in f of two, and I get three, okay? That's correct, an input of two, output of three. And an input of three, I got an output of eight. Let's see what this is. Input of three, again, output of eight, I've got the right graph, okay? So I'm gonna ch click check, boom. All right, so that's the gist of these problems, and I hope this helped.